Bobby, we picked you to be the uh, you picked me? the princess of our door to get rid of Hobie. <coughs> okay, anyone around that I can uh, attack? Bill Cosby. Just <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Be... Can he's still around. Just huh? Yeah, he, yeah, let him out of jail. See the enemy. Let him out. <laughs> yeah. Just close Thank you very much. Because they, he had made a deal with it's one prosecutor, away. and then another prosecutor yeah. prosecuted him anyway. So the court said that the original deal yeah. was lost. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, gentlemen, <clears throat> that's uh, okay. Um, Harvey was here this morning. I don't know if he's coming into the Gemara or not. Okay. All right. Uh, learning sponsors, a year of learning, children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren of Toby Paris, Saratova, Bad Yisrael Dov in her memory. Friends of Nina Monester, Nechama Azna Bad Yitzchak Aharo. Many friends of Stephen Vigdor, Vazecha Nishmat Simcha Melech Ben Meir Leib Halevi. Friends of Marcy Kurtz, in memory of her great-niece Leah Bracha, Bas Rivka. Isaac and Evelyn Blachor, in memory of his sister, Chaya Rachel Baz Issa. A month of learning by Mel and Heron Haller, in memory of his brother Yaakov Ben Avraham. Perry and Jill Meltzer, in memory of his parents, Bela Bad Avraham and David Ben Fischel Halevi. We have also a day of learning today by Mayor and Miriam Karkowski, in memory of his father, Yaakov Ben Menachem David Halevi. May the Shemus have an Aliyah, Crank Rafiel, Velti Yeshiva Shemat Leah, and the Chobane Israel, a good Gabench Jar. Amen. Again, our uh, learning today, I just want to get the name, the two, the one that. Uh, What's the matter? Uh, for. Uh, okay. Right, Rafua Shlema for Elimelech Zeb and Chai Yehudis, and also for Leone Meisel. Both of them, and one had. Worked that with Michael? No. No, the end result is they could not save the kidney, and the result is that he has to go on dialysis. Right. And they're looking for a, uh, a substitute. There's no kidney. kidney. That will be a match. Yeah. He has no kidney. Oh, he was only with four. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so that's right for good news. Harvey Mazel Tov on an engagement in the family. Mazel Tov. Get it, Mazel Tov. No, no, no. I wish I had a chance. Yeah, back. I got here. That's good. All right. If you're um, not going to be here, we should be deprived. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm just going to go back to the very bottom of the previous Amud. Okay, we had a discussion yesterday whether this was a totally new Indian or connected, right, Uvain? We were talking about the that. Right. What? The Arusa yeah. and the Arus, it's okay. the same Indian. Right. Okay, so uh, it, it was in, nice okay, so in regards, what? So I'm on the very bottom of the 13, Right, B, whatever it is. Thirteen B four. B four. I don't. I don't use Art Scroll as much. So this year. So I don't know the exact code. This there. year, or you, you take. You have no. The Art first Scroll time I went. The, the first time I went through. I focused on Art Scroll. Fun. So you don't say this year. You say this cycle. This cycle. Well, who knows right. what happens in the future? Anyway. So Hahu Arus. So dealing with the issue of paternity. Okay, the Gemara brings this particular incident as part of the ongoing discussion that we saw previously. Right? So that covers both whether it's a new Indian or not, right? All right, Hahu Arus Varusato Da'atul Kamid Rav Yosef. 
That's the last line. They came before Rav Yosef. Okay, he am Ramine. She said he's the father. She's pregnant. Okay, well, he didn't give birth yet, but still he can see, right? And remember, she's an Arusa. Okay, right? Vuhu Amar, and he says, and Minai. I'm, I'm the guy. I did it. Okay, regarding this issue of paternity. Okay, so this also could be considered part of the discussion on the testimony on progeny as well, which we also saw, right? That I don't know if uh, anybody brought that in yeah, that yesterday. Yes, believed here, even though- Yes, but, that, but nobody brought it up in the commentaries. Okay. All right, I can't assume. All right, you know what happens when you use the word assume? Yeah. Right, okay. So that's the point, okay, all right. So Amar Rav Yosef, so the top of Yud Dalet Amud Aleph, as we start off, okay, all right, Amar Rav Yosef, Lamai Nichushla, okay, what, for what basis should we be suspect of her? Okay, Chada, on the one hand, the Hakamoda, all right, because she's already acknowledging, right? he was, he and he acknowledges his uh, responsibility. Right? Yes, that he, it is part of his responsibility. Okay? Va'od, and furthermore, Ha'amar Rav Yehuda Amar Shmuel, did not Rav Yehuda in the name of Shmuel say, Halacha Rabban Gamliel, that that halacha was that she's believed. Okay? Amar Le'abai. And so Babai then raises the question, I'm assuming to Rav Yosef, Ubaha, and in this case, Kila Moda, where it, that he did not acknowledge Machshe Rabban Gamliel. Would Rabban Gamliel still validate this, the situation? Vahamar le Shmuel Rav Yehuda, but did not, right? Shmuel say to Rav Yehuda, Shinana, the smart tooth guy, Halacha Karabban Gamliel, that the law is like Rabban Gamliel. Va'at lo ta'avid uvda ad'ika rov k'sheri metzla. But didn't you indicate that uh, this masa, okay, this situation was only appropriate or only acknowledgeable or only, only in a situation where the majority of other men that, that may have been associated with her, I'll use that language, were k'sherim were kosher Jews, right? Vahacha, and here, rov psuli netzla. Okay, since she's Arusa already, therefore any other men that would have been in uh, some sort of a in the relationship, world, in the okay, yeah. situation with her would be pasul towards her, right? That's the point. Ula ta'amech, okay, and according to your line of reasoning, that should be problematic for her testimony in and of itself. Okay, halacha. Okay, va'at lo ta'avid uvda. Okay, and what happens? And therefore, we don't have. How can we say that this situation, this uh, incident, okay, is uh, inappropriate in that manner? Ela mai it lach so what do you have to say here? Okay, all right, uh, following. Ha lechat chila, okay, we can say as follows, right, that uh, understanding the situation, okay, initially, ha de'avad, maybe in one case, okay, that lechat chila initially, where we saw the Kohen was initially coming to marry, it's one thing. Here, this is after the fact. Vahanami kadiyavadami. And here we might say this is uh, after the fact as well. Okay, so what happens? Rami le Abai the Rabbi. So remember, Abai and Rabbi were the students of Rav Yosef. So they spoke to each other with the following question Umiyama Rabbi Yoshua enana amenet. And do we say that perhaps in this kind of a situation, Rabbi Yeshua would say, she's not believed. Or Minhu, 
but we'll have a contradiction with the following, okay? Heid Rabbi Yoshua, the Rabbi Yehuda ben Batea, the two of them gave uh, testimony, right? And this is from a situation in uh, Gemara Eduyus in regarding to the question of the lineage or the status, right? Namely, Al Amanat Esa, okay? Shahik Sheira Likuhuna. They're talking about a situation where the widow, the woman was a widow from a individual, a Kohen of questionable lineage. Okay. It was a questionable marriage? No, I didn't say that. I said his lineage was questionable. His lineage. His lineage was questionable. So what happened to the child then? Ah, let's that let's look at the question. Gemara and we'll see. Okay, All right. So what are we seeing here? Okay. She knew what this beforehand. Right. No, she was. She right. married. She it was we don't years. know if she knew it. Yeah. We don't know that the Gemara doesn't tell me that, Sid. Okay. The question is, she she was married to a man who maybe was a halal, maybe was not. We don't know what his. And now she wants to marry a co. We don't know what his lineage is. Okay, it could be that he was a valid Kohen. It could be that he was a Chala. Right. We don't know. Okay. okay so what's the answer on the suffering? We don't and know yet. Okay. We don't know. The Gemara doesn't tell me anything yet. Yeah. The answer, that's the well, but the Gemara doesn't say it here. Right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. The Gemara doesn't tell me. Here. Okay. So I don't know what they're going to tell her in that situation till I continue with the Gemara, right? Okay, so the two of them, Rabbi Yeshua and Rabbi Yehuda, their answer is that in that situation, even though the first husband is of questionable lineage, whether he's a valid Kohen or not, they are believing her and therefore, in that situation, they will permit her to marry a, a new Kohen. Okay? Now I know that. Okay? All right. So the Gemara now. Okay? <laughs> okay. So this is clearly implying that Rabbi Yoshua accepts her Chazaka status. Okay? In this situation. Exactly, Ruvain. That's what we're going to get to. So the Gemara says, Hachi hashta. Basically, how can you compare the situations? Hatam, in that case, Isha Niseit, Ubodeket Veniseit. In that question, earlier example of the questionable lineage guy, she was A, married, and B, she's going to examine and check out the whole situation before she remarries, okay? Hacha, in our case, right? Isha mizana, bodeket mizana. Are we going to say it's possible that she was uh, playing around and is she gonna check who she plays around with and then continue to play around? Is that the situation? Amar Rava, says Rava, the Rabbi Yoshua, the Rabbi Yoshua Kasha? Does that mean that we have a problem between what Rabbi Yoshua said one place and what he carried out in this other example here, and therefore it's a problematic? The Rabban Gamliel, the Rabban Gamliel, Lo Kasha? Does that seem to imply that with Rabban Gamliel in two different examples, we don't have a question? Vaha Katane Sefer. But here at the end of the Mishnah in Eduyo, Amar lehen Rabban Gamliel, says Rabban Gamliel, Kibalnu edutchem, we accepted your testimony. Avalmana aseh, but what can we do? Shehare gazar Rabban Yochanan ben Zaka, that an exera was issued by Rabbi Yochanan ben Zaka. Shelo lahoshiv beidin alkach, but Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai's 
edict, let's put it that way, regarding the Kohanim, okay, was to basically say, what? Okay, that you have to, you want to use the word distance, separate. Kohanim listen when okay. they feel they can. Not, right, not. so in other words, that when, when the edict was presented, the Kohanim are prepared to accept I like that better. That, not that mm -hmm. shomim is the right word, but they're prepared to accept so. the edict when it comes to, to be separated. In other words, not to get together. Aval lo le but not to come together. But they don't get listen right. when they say you can. Right? Ela amar rabba, but rather rabba says, the rabban gamliel, the rabban gamliel, lo kashim. That regarding the views of rabban gamliel in these different situations, we're suggesting there is not a problem. Hatam, there in the Mishnah, in our Mishnah, with a case of relations with an identified man, her claim is certain. Bari, okay? She knows who she has. Right, who is so right. Hacha, Shema. Here it's Maybe. uncertain. Maybe. Okay? Because she knows she had beer uh, with him, but, but doesn't know, know who. Stated. Right? The Rabbi Yoshua. Adar Rabbi Yoshua Nami Lokash, and we might say that Rabbi Yoshua verse again, again Rabbi Yoshua. Also, there's no problem there. Hatam, right? Okay, okay. Chad Sveika. There, there's only one question of doubt, namely the okay, the question of the relations with the identified man. Hacha. In our case, right, what are we saying here? There are two doubts, right? Trace fake. One is the doubt about his family, and one is the doubt about the individual. Okay. Hilkach Larabin Gamliel Alim Le Bari. And therefore we say with Rabin Gamliel, okay, what does he say is the stronger issue? The Bari. That even where there is only that single doubt, okay, he still is of the opinion that he's prepared to validate the situation. Okay, and he feels then that the uncertainty, okay, is uh, he takes that as a kula, as a leniency. Nami Pasil, that there, even when there's the two doubts, okay, he is going to say it's, he will not validate the situation, it's invalid. Now, what happens, says the Gemara? The Rabbi Yoshua, Alim Le Chad Sveika. For Rabbi Yoshua, what's stronger is the fact that there's that single doubt. The Afilu Baberi Nami Pasil, that for him, even where her testimony seems to be certain, nevertheless, he's going to invalidate, right? Vakile sveik sveika, but he's more lenient in regard to the double uncertainty. Da'afilu b'shema nami machshir, that even in that case where her testimony may be less certain, nevertheless, He's prepared to validate. <coughs> okay, let's go on. Tanu Rabbanan says a new brighter. Coming back then to what we saw before, Ezohi Amanat Esa. What do we mean when we say she is the widow of a man whose, I call it Kohen lineage, is questionable? Right? Kol She'en Ba. We're clarifying this at this point that we're saying that there is no example of uh, a mamzer or a natin, a Gibeonite who became a water carrier, etc., in his lineage. Nor also do we say that there was a situation where as the Gemara has hinted at elsewhere, that they were servants, slaves of, uh, of kings who forced Jewish women, okay, 
even the daughters of Kohanim to marry them. Okay. So what happens? Amar Rabbi Meir, says Rabbi Meir, as we go to the new home, right? Shamati kol she'en ba'echad mikol ele. He says, I heard that where there is none of those above situations, three those three cases that we just listed, right? Masi'in l'kuhuna, that they then permit them to marry into the kuhuna. Okay. Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar Omer, Mishum Rabbi Meir, in the name of Rabbi Meir, the following. V'chein haya Rabbi Shimon ben Manasseh Omer Kidvarav. And Rabbi Shimon ben Manasseh, okay, also said uh, the same thing. Ezohi almana Esa. What do we mean by a woman then who's a widow from a husband of questionable Kohanic uh, lineage, kol shenitma ba safek chalal. Okay, any situation, we say what that uh, that we can say that there is not where there is. I'm going to say no suspicion if that I can use that that the line has not become an appropriate tame, however term we want to use, because of the doubt that there may be a halal in the family lineage, okay? Makirin Yisrael, Mamzirin Shebeneihem. Why is this the case that we might not know if there's a halal in the family lineage? The answer the Gemara is suggesting to us is that Makirin Yisrael, Mamzirin Shebeneihem, that uh, we have a, a record, right? We, we keep track, however term we want to use it. But we recognize among the Jewish people who might be mamzerim among them. Okay? But they don't keep a clear record or awareness, right, of the somebody who might be a chala. Okay? That's the case. Right. There is a case by Rev. Um, Menashe Hakad, Menashe Klein. Yeah. He had a community. You know, he had a, a show. Yeah. So a guy adopted a baby. Right. And came to the kids bar mitzvah. Rev. Menashe Zal says, to him, "You know, the baby's not a lady." Right. What are you talking about? He's my son. He says, "Yeah, but you adopted him. It's not a lady." So I asked Rav Menashe a few weeks later, yeah. what was the maskana? He said, they moved the flatbush and the kids are lazy. <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> Could have been a coin. Could have been a... <coughs> well, that's what they're talking about. That we don't right, that's that. the implication. That's <clears throat> the case. Okay. I know of a situation, a colleague, who they had difficulty having birth. And they adopted. Okay. And then within the next couple of months, she got pregnant, okay? And so, you know, it happens, you're right, Murray. But the question in our application here is one child is the natural child would have the status, would have the status, right? And the other, the adopted. It's not even a halal, he's in Yisrael. Right, so it's not as significant, but that case. Yeah, all right, let's go on. Amar Mar. Okay, so here we have another case. Um, it says, right, Ezohi Almanat Esa. How might we also define the status of a widow of a man of questionable lineage, Kohanic lineage? Kol she'en ba lo mishum mamzerut, velo mishum netinut, velo mishum avdei melachim. So those are the same three categories we just saw previously. That's what the Gemara tells she us. She was, <coughs> the mother was fit to the Kohen. Okay. Ha halal kasher. But here, if it was a situation of a, of a halal, we would say kasher. Mai shna hanach. Okay. So what What's so that? different among these others? The oraita. Okay. That they are rabbinic um, Torah mandated. Halal nami the oraita. But isn't the halal also Torah mandated? The two, and furthermore, 
Amar Rabbi Meir says, Rabbi Meir, Shamati kol she'ein ba echad mi kol elu, misi'in l'kuhuna. I heard that if they don't have any of the, one of these items, one of these uh, situations of those in their items. family here history, that they can marry into the kuhuna. Hainu Tanakama. And that precisely is the statement of Tanakama. Okay. Vatu and furthermore, Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar, Omer, he says, Mishum Rabbi Meir, in the name of Rabbi Meir, Bechain Haya, Rabbi Shimon ben Manasya, Omer, Kidvarav. And likewise, Rabbi Shimon ben Manasya said, and his names too, right? Ezohi Almanat Esa. What do we consider as the widow of a questionable Kohanic lineage? Kol ma ba safek chalal, a situation where one could have been uh, in the family uh, right, line. In the family a line, possibility, a possibility of a, of a chalal. chalal. Makirin Yisrael mamzerim shabenehim, that we recognize and we keep track of who might be the mamzerim among them. Ve'ein makirim chalalim shabenehim, but we don't keep track or recognize who the chalalim might be. Vaha amart, but here you said Resha Khalal Kasher. Initially you said that a Khalal would be valid. Amar Rabbi Yochanan. Says Rabbi Yochanan, what does he tell us? Namely the following. Okay. Mamzer Tsavach. When it's a situation of a Mamzer, okay, what do we say? It sort of cries out. Okay. He himself. Right? Uh, right. He if may you, protest. If I say Ruben is a mamzer. You should and never Ruben say is that. not a mamzer, he'll say, no, I'm not. Right? All right? Okay. That, you're correct in saying that he would protest. Okay? But I would also say, if you want to say cries out, in other words, again, it comes back to say it's known. In other words, there is... Uh, Cola, there's public publicity, there's a recognition. Okay? The halal, but if he's a halal, show take. He's silent. Okay, or again, it's not known. Okay? So both, right? Ika benai. That's the difference between them. Okay? All right. So uh, all right, just keep in mind, by the way. Okay, that uh, we have to also keep in the back. I was thinking as I was preparing this, don't we also have a statement elsewhere in the Gemara? Shtika kahoda adam. Okay, yep. All right. So what does that uh, seem to tell us? That if the halal is silent, okay, does that seem to imply that he is? Right, and that's... That's, that's going to be the question. Exactly. Right, right. So let's go on. Ika banaihu. Okay. And we also have the following situation. Tanakama Savar. The Tanakama was of the following opinion. Kol pasu the karule vishatik. Any in, uh, situation of being invalid. Okay. And uh, he is uh, referred to in that manner. And he's silent, pasu. He is then considered. Silence is acquiescence. Right. Silence is shtika kodadam. That, okay. But it's, in other words, vahachi ka'amar tanakama. And maybe this is what the tanakama was really saying. Ezohi amonat esa. What is the what is the situation with the widow of a man of questionable Kohanic lineage? Kol she'ein ba lo shatuk mamzerut velo shatuk nitinut velo shatuk avdei melachim velo shatuk chalal. Okay, it's a situation where we have, okay, basically the silence in regards to mamzerut, silence in regards to nitinut. Okay, no shatuk. That way, they're not speaking, right? In other words, they're not silent in regards to their status. They would defend their position, their lineage. 
Okay. On, on those three. Places. All right, on those Mamzerut, on Netinut, on Avdut, and also in regards to being a Chalam. So the guy, the widow says, my husband never accepted me as a Okay. The Ka'amar lay Rabbi Meir. And here, what then is Rabbi Meir saying to him? He nachu the kapasil le bekahal. Okay, it's possible here that he would be invalid in the terms of the of uh, the 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 uh, kahal in terms of the community. Okay, marrying him aval shatuk chalal kasher. Okay, the issue is. If you're not, if if someone accuses you of mamzeru, you must speak up because otherwise you, oh, you can't marry, marry into the community. But if someone accuses, accuses you of halal, you don't necessarily you, it make it public. All the only implication is you can't marry a baskol, and speaking up may be a violation of your insulting your father because you're saying my father misbehaved. Right. I can show you the chuva. Right. Kasher. Right. Vahad And the fact that he's silent. Mishum delo ichpatle. Maybe it doesn't make a difference to him. And as what's the, what is it? Why is it not a difference? The halal can still marry into the community. All he's limited to no is, no okay, is uh, what I'll say, aspects connected with the Kohen. Number one, and number two, being able to marry a, a woman that's a Kohen. But that's very little. Right, but those are minimal restrictions, okay? Whereas and even the, that, it would be evident they wouldn't make them divorce. Right. V'ka'amar le Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar, the Tanakama, the Rabbi Meir. And that was what was like, what was being said by Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar, the Tanakama, regarding Rabbi, what Rabbi Meir said. If it's such that Rabbi, that we understand that Rabbi Meir would validate him in such a situation of silence, okay, then they wouldn't call him a halal, okay, and he would be silent. He would uh, perhaps uh, complain. But were it a situation that someone would call him a mamze and, and he was silent, and the fact that he's silent, there that tells us that in that situation, there would be publicity. It would be known whether or not he really was a mamze. But a situation where we say that if he was called a mamzer and he would protest, okay, or there would be knowledge about it, right? Chalal v'shotek, pasul, okay, whereas compared to the chalal and he would be silent, okay, and he would be invalid. Vahai de ishtik, and the fact that he's silent, savar mistaye de lo mafke le mikahal would be such that he might be silent. Why? Because it's sufficient that he knows that he would not be ousted, okay, and not be able to marry within the Jewish community. Okay, going on to finish up this piece. Tane Chada, right, we taught in one situation, Rabbi Yossi Omer, Shtok Mamzer Kasher, Shtok Chalal, Pasu, Rabbi Yossi saying a silence on the part of the mamzer is he's, what? He's if he's called he's a mamzer and he's quiet. Mamzer, it means it's validated that that's his status. Okay. Shtok chalal, the he's fact that the. Shtok mamzer means if he does not say, yes, I am, he just remains silent, he's kosher to marry. The, the verbal act was uh, accusation by one person, person is right. not sufficient. I am so demoralized, really. Based on a psychology, there's people you could protest that I'm not a mamza, 
I'm no. not, uh, well, I'm it not is. sure of that. Okay. Shtok halal pasul. The halal is silent. Silent. We don't let him, marry, don't let him marry. That's Rabbi Yossi. Right? Vatanya idach. But we teach the opposite. Shtok halal kasher. That where the halal is silent, he is valid. Okay. In other words, v'shtok mamzer pasul. So you have both opinions. Right, you have that view. Right, low kasha. Here we say it's not uh, problematic. Ha, Tanakama Aliba the Rabbi Meir. One, okay, our second brighter. Okay, there is Tanakama according to Rabbi Meir. Ha, the Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar, Aliba the Rabbi Meir. The other is the view of Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar according to Rabbi Meir. It's whether you think the person is going to protest their situation because of what limitations is uh, impingent upon them. Also, don't you have to take into account the uh, old tablet? Namely, was said in the fit of anger, having an argument. The Rama says if it's in the middle of a screaming match, then remaining silent is not invalidated. Okay. But if somebody goes to the rub and says, you know, I know uh, Schwartz is not really. That's involved, very different situations. That's what Marty is saying. Ask, and if Schwartz doesn't say anything. That's what Marty is saying, right, Marty? That's what Shulchan Aruch is saying. Okay. I'll pick up that. Right? Okay, our new Mishnah. Amar Rabbi Yossi. Back to Rabbi Yossi here. Ma'aseh betinoke. We have an incident that occurred with a young girl. Right? She yardalim la'ot mayam min ha'ayin v'ne'ensa. And she went down to fill a jug, let's say, of for water from the spring, and she was raped. Amar Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri. Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri tells us, "Im rov anshei ha'ir, maseim lekuhuna." If the majority of the people in that location, in that community, allow their daughters to marry into the kuhuna, are fit. Okay, to marry kuhuna. Right? They have good yichus. Right. Where do you see that? That's the text. Imrov anshei her ear They marry Most their of the daughters. People are able to marry. Kahana. That doesn't tell me that they have anything about yifus. Harezo tina kuhuna. This already, and he indicates that she would be permitted to marry into the kuhuna. Okay, let's see. Look at Rashi. That what? That's what it says is that if, if the people in the community have the proper Rov ha'ik, sheirim lahasi, right? Yeah. Benotehim, v'almanotehim lekuna, she'ein rov b'nei ha'ir min ha'posu, that we assume that the people... She was not made puzzled by this Okay, act. so Rashi is simply saying that most of the men are Valid. Valid. That's, what all valid. That's, that's all right. That's, that's all. That's, that's all. Point. Okay. All right. So let's go. On. <laughs> right. Amar le Rava le Rav Nachman. So it's Rava to Rav Nachman. Okay. It can't be by one. It has to be by one. No. It's the. It's only one guy raped her. You're not okay. talking about validation. It's the guy raped her, but was a good guy? It's no. Not, we don't know. <laughs> Was not invalid to marry a, a poet. It's her situation. We're talking about if it, if it's in Century Village, but from in Ainsley or in Wolverton or in Yarmouth, then you would know that most of the people are reasonably religious Jews. But if it happened in Harlem, then you would assume most of the people are not, and that would affect her status. Right, we'll so see. What's the definition of reasonable? Religion? That's the question. You have to ask Rashi. Rabbi Yochanan <laughs> ben Nuri de Amar Kaman, according to whom, he says, according to whom is Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri's statement saying that she is still eligible to marry, to marry a Kohen? That's the question. 
e Rabban Gamliel, if it's according to the view we saw of Rabban Gamliel, Afil Barok Sulim Nami Maksher, even were the majority of people in that community not valid, according to Rashi, okay, Jews, right? He could still permit her to marry a Kohen, right? Ika Rabbi Yoshua, if it were according to the view of Rabbi Yoshua that Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri was deciding, Afilu Barov Ksherim, Nami Pasu. Even in that case. Raped by a Kohen or by a non Kohen? No. 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 But if she is. But if she was raped by a non Jew, it make, or a, or a Mumar, it makes a difference. Okay. All right. Let me, yeah. let me just yeah. add. Remember, we have a general statement. Achore Rabim Lahato. Right. Okay. Right. That applies in a number of variety of situations. That seems to be what might be in operation, that same concept here. If rov of the people in the town are ksherim, so okay, all right, then the assumption is even the guy who raped her was probably-, probably a, from the rov and from the crusher, rove. and therefore that's, that's the point. Kosher, kosher okay. the kahuna. Right. That's the only point I wanted to bring in by, by citing. Then we should stop there. Okay, yeah. all right, all right. So what happens? All right, we're going to see that it goes into a question when we go over to the top of the next Amud that uh, has to be clarified uh, in terms so this of this point, incident. He has no source for his Okay, so all right. So we're going to see, okay, that the Gemara wants to clarify the situation in more detail. All right, and we'll pick up there tomorrow. Okay. All right. Hey, this is a riot. You don't send your nine year old to pick.